Hey guys, this is Farouk from Ingo and welcome to my detailed class guide for the Untamed. So in this video, we're going to have a look at the new and exclusive weapon for the Untamed uh, and all of the individual weapon skills. We'll then be looking at the healing, utility and elite skills you can use. We'll then see how the Untamed changed the Ranger's base profession mechanics. Then we'll be looking at all of the individual traits within the new specialization and ending the video with a combat demonstration so you can see how it all comes together. So if you're interested in playing as the Untamed or if you already are and you want to know more, sit tight and we'll get started right now. Alright, so before we go into the detail, I just want to give you a quick profession overview for the Untamed. So the Untamed is the third elite specialization for the Ranger in Guild Wars 2 and it's unlocked in the end of Dragon's expansion. Ancient forces of nature dwell within Echovald, and the Untamed channel these primal energies through their bond with their pets. So that's a little uh, taster there. That um, hints towards the uh, Unleashed ability, which is something we'll be going through in the Profession Mechanics section. But basically you switch between Unleashed Pet and Unleashed Ranger, and you're either buffing yourself or your pet, depending on the circumstances. Changes your weapon skills and everything, which is really awesome. Um, so we'll be going through that. We've got a new weapon to look at, which is the hammer for the ranger, which is really awesome. Lots of people have been asking for that. And then we've got cantrip abilities as well, which is something we're going to go through all the healing utility and elite skills for that um, skill type as well. So uh, without further ado, let's get started with the weapon skills. All right, so now we're going to have a look at the new weapon for the untamed. So we've got the two handed hammer, which is something that quite a lot of people have wanted. Um, obviously lots of bunny thumper references to Guild Wars 1, that's the main reason why everyone wanted it, but hopefully we can make a pretty good uh, class out of it as well. So I'm going to have a look at all of the skills. It is a melee weapon for the Ranger, um, and there are two sets of weapon skills uh, depending on which mode we're in here, and I'll go into much more detail on that in the profession mechanics section. But basically we're going to swap between Pet Unleashed and Ranger Unleashed and it's going to affect our weapon skills here. Not massively, but basically while you're in Ranger Unleashed it's going to um, make those skills a little bit better. So uh, probably make the animations cooler as well. So, But let's uh, have a look now. So, Alright, so we've got our hammer out here. And our number one skill, so this doesn't change, so this is be consistent. So our number one skill is a Chain Ability uh, and it's Hammer Strike, Hammer Slam and Heavy Smash. So first one is strike your foe, uh, so a bit of damage up to three targets in melee range, then strike your foe again, a bit more damage, another three targets in melee range, and then smash the ground and damage nearby foes. So obviously the last one's gonna hit up to five targets, it's gonna, and it's gonna be a bit more damage, and anyone within melee range is gonna get hit by that. So obviously try not to interrupt that, because it will be weighted heavily towards the last strike so let's try this out then so strike slam and smash so strike slam and smash that's a pretty cool animation there just for a number one ability isn't it nice oh the pet's having a go as well <laughs> all right no really cool that's good uh sets a good example for the um for the other animations i'm looking forward to seeing them so our number two a wild swing which has a seven second cooldown so strike nearby an enemies inflicting cripple so it's going to uh, cripple and damage up to five targets within melee range. Let's try this out. Bam, there you go. So you spin, you can see the cripple on the enemy there, and you can see uh, you're spinning. So anyone there within melee range is going to be affected by that. So that's a pretty cool ability there. Slows enemies down. So you can maybe cripple them and then roll back, switch to a bow or something like that, and do some range damage. Our number three ability is Overbearing Smash, which has a 15 second cooldown. So quickly strike the ground, dazing nearby enemies. If this strikes an enemy, follow up with a leaping strike that dazes enemies again. Okay, so we're gonna hit the ground. Uh, so we're gonna daze enemies, um, and we're gonna hopefully, well, hopefully you hit an enemy with it, otherwise it's pointless. And you're gonna leap and daze the enemy again. So it hits up to five targets in a radius of 180 around you. So let's, let's try this out now. So bang, and then you can see the follow up leap after that to get the additional days. So the first thing days is everyone for a quarter of a second, and then the follow-up days is a second and a quarter, so that's quite a big difference there. But obviously, you're gonna be hitting an enemy, so yeah, you're gonna, everyone around you's gonna get a days and some damage, and you're gonna leap at one of the targets and do even more damage and daze them again there, so that's a cool ability. Number four is Savage Shockwave, which has an 18 second cooldown. 
so smash the ground creating free expanding shockwaves that apply condition okay uh, so it's going to do some damage immobilize weakness vulnerability it's going to help to five targets so the first hit radius is 120 second is 240 and third is 360 so obviously it gets bigger um, each one uh, so let's have a look Let's create these expanding shockwaves. So if I stand between these guys, hopefully we'll hit both. So bang, and we can see boom, boom, and then there's three shockwaves. And you can see it's put the effects on both those targets around us there. So that's awesome. And our fifth ability is Fump. And yes, they did confirm that as a nod to the Bunny Fumper. They thought they'd stick that in there. I'm not going to argue. So 25 second cooldown, slam the ground with your hammer, knocking down nearby enemies. All right, so pretty straightforward. Good knockdown ability here. Uh, be useful for an interrupt. So knock down for two seconds, up to five targets in a 180 radius around you. So if I try this here, bam, there you go. You can see knock down both of those enemies around me there. My pets just go going mental and just absolutely destroying everyone. But fair enough. Uh, so now um, that's those abilities there. So what I'm going to show you is if we go to unleash ranger here not only do we get this awesome animation and oh, he's attacking that guy now so we look really awesome uh, but obviously the animation is probably be cooler as well so our number one stays the same and then our other abilities become unleashed versions of the original so obviously they're gonna be a bit more powerful i'll just show these all off to you now so unleashed wild sw swing so strike nearby enemies inflicting damage and deals increased damage to disabled enemies so any if any if they're stunned days or anything like that um, then you're going to do a damage increase of 20% but it does a fair amount of damage anyway and hits up to five targets in melee range so let's just try this out so bam there you go as you can see it's just extra on the animation then just to show off that that's just the number one ability which looked cool anyway but with this extra uh, it looks kind of like I don't know I don't know if it's supposed to but obviously it looks almost like poisony but I'm not sure if that's really we're going for here with the ranger but anyway it's sort of a wild untamed thing but yeah it's pretty cool maybe they'll tweak that animation and the number three is unleashed overbearing smash which has a 15 second cooldown so quickly strike the ground blinding nearby enemies if this strikes an enemy follow up with a leaping strike that removes boons so much like the normal one but with different effects so i'm going to hit the ground blind everyone and i'm going to remove boons with the follow-up strike so let's try on this guy's so, oh, bam and then bam was accidental roll there so i hit the ground uh you're gonna blind everyone and then you're gonna jump at the enemy as long as you hit someone which i hope you did uh you're gonna remove boons as well so number four is unleashed savage shockwave which has an 18 second cooldown so smash the ground creating free shockwaves that deal damage deal increased damage to disabled enemies and enemies with conditions Okay, so let's try this out. So same as the other one, so 120 radius, 240, then 360. Um, a 20% damage increase to uh, disabled foes and a damage increase of 2% per condition on the enemies as well. So let's stand between these guys, try that out. Bam, there you go, big smash on the ground. You can see the waves there. And um, rather than putting conditions on the enemies like the normal one does, this one actually does more damage based on the conditions. So links with that. So our uh, number five, Unleashed Thump. So 25 second cooldown, slam the ground with your hammer, gaining boons for each target struck. Okay, so uh, that's gonna be a 180 radius around us, hitting up to five targets, and we're gonna get Might and Fury on us for each foe struck. So let's just try that out. Bam, there you go. And we can see we've got the boons on ourselves there, uh, which is gonna mean we're gonna do even more damage and a nice amount of damage to all the enemies around us as well. Okay, so that is all of the new weapon uh, weapon skills. And don't forget, obviously, there you go. We change back to Unleash Pet and we're back to the normal skills, which are just the um, slightly uh, less damaged version. But they do have different effects. So depending on the situation, you might want to switch between them. Uh, we'll go into more detail in the profession mechanics part of the video. Uh, right, so yeah, so that's everything for the weapon skills. So now we're going to have a look at the new healing skill. All right, so now we're going to have a look at the new and exclusive healing skill for the Untamed. And this is our first look at the new cantrip abilities. Uh, so this is called Perilous Gift and has a 30 second cooldown. So, while active, you cannot die and cannot swap pets. When the cantrip ends, drain health from your pet based on a percentage of its current health. So for three seconds, if you would take lethal damage, ignore it. 
uh, and then at the end of it pet health conversion so drain health from your pet based on percentage so you can heal yourself 33 percent of the percentage so that's an interesting one it's quite a unique healing ability so obviously we get a three second buff on ourselves which means we can't die so you're going to really use this in an oh crap situation where you're going to die so you get that and then your pet's going to take big damage after those three seconds but that that health is going to go to you so you will get a heal at the end of it and you can't die in the meantime so it could be quite an effective skill obviously you're going to poor pet's going to take a nice chunk of damage so do bear that in mind uh, and you can't swap pets while perilous gift is active either so just bear that in mind but yeah i think that's a a pretty cool one so let's just have a look so we're going to bam three seconds we've got perilous gift on us and then after three seconds bam there you go you can see big damage there and the animation shows that health coming to us there so a very unique uh, skill there for our first counter ability and um yeah i think it could be useful i don't know i mean whether i would still prefer to have you know a classic chunk heal but it depends on what sort of situations you're in and that could really get you out of a sticky situation uh so yeah that's the new healing ability uh so now we're going to have a look at the new utility skills all right so now we're going to have a look at the new utility skills so these are our new cantrip abilities as you can see we've got four across the top here so i'll just look at the first three now and then whack out the fourth one afterwards so our first one is exploding spores which has a 25 second cooldown so create a ring of spores around yourself that explodes after a short, short duration enemies hit by all spores are knocked down all right so this is going to create a 120 radius of spores around us um and then after a short duration I think it tells us what that is. We're going to knock everyone down for a couple of seconds. And it looks like we're going to put Cripple on them as well. And hopefully do a decent amount of damage. So what is it? It's a one, 120 radius. So it's quite a small radius. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get both these guys. Oh, yeah, there you go. Look. Oh, <laughs> there you go. So obviously knocks knocked down as well as, uh, as Cripple on there. And you can see <laughs> cool animation there. They just grow really quickly and then splat. And then they literally explode. And do that to everyone around you so that's pretty cool especially if you're using a hammer in your, your melee so you can be within melee distance of enemies so it's important to have skills like that okay so next we've got mutate conditions which has a 30 second cooldown so convert all your conditions into vulnerability this is an interesting one there so uh, self vulnerability per condition so I guess it depends. <laughs> as long as you've got worse conditions on yourself, you can convert them into vulnerability, um, which potentially could be useful, especially if you're not taking too much damage. But, you know, it's one of those ones, you know, do you really want to stick this on your bar when there's plenty of other things to choose from? Do you want to be stacking vulnerability on yourself? It's not really my priority personally, but I suppose it depends on what situation you're in. But let's just demonstrate that. So you can see just an animation there, but obviously any conditions I've got on myself will turn it into vulnerability. So that's one that, you know, I'm sure someone will find a clever way of using that. But for me, it doesn't really seem like something I'd be rushing to add to my bar. So our third one is Unnatural Traversal. And this has a 40 second cooldown. Okay, let me just switch this out for the fourth one as well when I'm at it. Uh, so yeah, Unnatural Traversal. So teleport to your target, making nearby enemies vulnerable. If an enemy is struck, this skill's recharge is reduced. All right, so it's going to teleport from 900 range. Um, anyone nearby, so in a 240 radius, well, it looks like it's going to um, get vulnerability on them. And if you strike an enemy, uh, this, the recharge is reduced by 50%. So that would be good. So if I use this on this guy, so teleport. I can see it's taken 50% off the cooldown because we struck an enemy. As well as it put vulnerability on the enemy there as well. So that's probably quite a good one for, for movement and stuff like that, moving around the battlefield and also sticking conditions on enemies. And then our fourth and final utility skill is Nature's Binding, which has a 35 second cooldown. So surround nearby foes with a cage of nature they cannot escape. Enemies that were not struck are affected by active cages. So, all right, this is interesting. So nearby foes are going to be surrounded with a cage of nature they can't escape. So basically it's going to root people in position for four seconds up to five targets um, in a radius of 120 by the looks of it. So let's try this out here. Let's try and get a couple of these guys in here. So if I use that, boom, there you go. You can see they're both in cages there. 
they can't move. Uh, they're trapped there. So if, obviously, if I use that and I'm using a ranged weapon, I'm, I'm shooting them, and they can't get to me because they're stuck in place, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, so that's sort of like a, uh, a crowd control ability that you can utilize there. It can affect up to five targets. So that's pretty good if you're surrounded by quite a lot of enemies and you want to like use that and then then roll roll back out of the way, whack out a bow, and just like, rain down on them. That'd be a pretty effective skill. So I think that's probably where you're going to be using that. Alright, so that's all of our new utility skills for the Untamed. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the new Elite skill. Alright, so now it's time to look at our new and exclusive Elite skill for the Untamed. So this is our Elite Cantrip ability, and it's called Forest's Fortification, and has a 90 second cooldown. So surround yourself with elements of nature, gaining defensive boons and damage reduction. Striking an enemy while this fortification is active reduces the cooldown of this ability. Okay, so this is going to last for 6 seconds. You're going to reduce incoming damage by 50%. Uh, whenever you strike an enemy, um, you're going to reduce the recharge by 1 second. So if you manage to strike an enemy that 5 or 6 times, then you're going to be knocking that off the cooldown. Obviously, you try and hit them as much as possible, I suppose. Um, you're going to be getting some boons, stability, resistance, resolution. So it's a good defensive ability to help you stay alive there. Um, I know lots of people probably prefer their elite skills maybe to be more offensive and do some damage. But this is a good defensive ability uh, and it's just going to help you stay alive. Especially if you're using a hammer. You'll be doing a lot of damage but you can be melee range. You'll be vulnerable, especially with your medium armor. So that's something to bear in mind um, that that's a situation you might want to use it in. So let's have a little look at the animation for this. So really cool animation you can see that stays around us for like six seconds i assume nice so that's a really awesome animation there like most of them are on this so that's something that you might want to use defensively to to help yourself in combat uh so so do bear that in mind uh, so that is the uh the new elite skill for the untamed uh so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the profession mechanics all right so now we're going to have a look at the profession mechanics for the untamed so we've been through quite a lot of the unique things about this uh, elite spec already we've obviously got the new weapon the hammer which is really awesome we've got a new cantrip abilities and we've touched a little bit on this unleashed uh, thing here just to show you how it changes the weapon skills so i'm going to go into a little bit more detail on that now so you've sort of got two modes with your ranger one will be active at all times so you've got Pet Unleashed, which is on which we're on at the moment, which gives our pet these three new unique abilities as well, which we'll go through. And then we've got Unleash Ranger, which obviously, as we looked at, changes our weapon skills here. Um, it also gives us um, it gives us more damage, but makes us a bit susceptible to taking damage as well. So it makes you a little bit of a glass cannon. So do bear that in mind. But obviously we get the changes to our weapon skills and then our pet skills just go back to their like uh, normal abilities that they have um, which are specific to the type of pet. So we've already been through this, we've been through all the changes in the weapons here because obviously I just wanted to show you that as part of the weapon skills. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll show you the unique pet abilities that we get. So if I go to look, unleash your uh, unleash pet has a 10 second cooldown. Unleash your pet to draw on the raw power of its bond with nature, granting it new abilities. So that's what we're going to do. And then we can see we've got these abilities here. So whatever pet you choose, you actually have these three abilities as long as you're in the Unleash pet. So we're going to have a look at them now. Hopefully they're good. Obviously when you're in Unleash pet, you get Unleash Ranger, also 10 second cooldown. Unleash the raw power of your primal bond with nature and your pet. Enhancing your offensive power while becoming more susceptible to damage. So that's where it says I haven't found anything yet Where it actually gives you like a percentage of how much that more damage you take and how much you do and stuff like that um, So that might be interesting to look into but uh, I assume it doesn't yeah It's not going to be too much of an increase in the damage you take hopefully uh, so just bear that in mind So yeah, while we're in unleashed pet, let's have a look at these new skills So the first one are the f1 ability here so we can obviously use these um our F1 to F3 keys to just activate these whenever they're in combat. So Venomous Outburst, which has a 10 second cooldown. So your pet teleports to your target and lashes out, poisoning enemies and applying vulnerability to enemies that are disabled. So within 900 range, the pet's going to teleport to the enemy. Uh, it's going to poison them uh, for about 6 seconds. 
Uh, it's going to apply vulnerability to enemies that are disabled. So if anyone has stun, daze and stuff like that on them, then it's also going to have that added effect. And it's going to affect up to five targets in a 180 radius. So let's try it out on this guy here. So if I use my F1, bam, just teleported there, poisoned him. If he was disabled as well, then he would have got vulnerability as well. But you can see that's quite an effective ability then. I mean, he's going mental <laughs> slapping that, uh, that golem. Um, yeah, it seems to do quite a lot of damage. Uh, so our F2 ability, so our second unique uh, pet ability here, is Rending Vines, which has a 15 second cooldown. So your pet strikes nearby enemies with vines, removing boons and slowing enemies that are disabled. So you can see a theme here. Obviously, I think a lot of our um, abilities that we have, our new abilities, like, you know, they just put disabilities on enemies and then we can link that up with the pet. So it's, gonna all, it's all going to be about, you know, timing it and... Um, working um, out the best way and the best time to use your skills. So um, it's gonna, it's got 900 range on the actual skill, but it's gonna attack the enemy um, with vines in a 180 radius on the on the target. And it's gonna cause, um, it's gonna remove boons to up to five targets and cause slow as well if they're disabled. So let's try it out again on this guy. So I can do it from back here. It's gonna run up to him, shoot out some vines and it's gonna, well, it's, it's gonna remove boons, do a bit of damage, and um, yeah, so even and they have even bigger effect if they're disabled as well. And then F3, our third and final uh, new unique pet ability here is Enveloping Haze, which has a 25 second cooldown. Um, summon a swirling spore cloud around your pet, destroying projectiles and chilling enemies who are disabled. So this is going to create a, uh, a cloud around your pet, which is awesome. It's going to last for five seconds in it, and it's going to affect people within a radius of 360. It's going to block missiles that are coming in. Uh, it's going to affect up to five targets, damaging enemies around them. And um, it's also going to chill enemies um, if they're disabled as well. So let's, let's give this a go now. So if I attack this guy and then we use this. Oh, nice animation there. You can see, oh, it's a big... The big radius as well and as it moves around it's going to affect them as you can see and and it'll have even more effect chill and everything like that i will try out a few more of these awesome animations <laughs> then obviously that will have a bigger effect as well so that's all of the new pet skills and like i said when you switch unleash ranger it's just going to go back to the normal pet skills and that will change per pet you have um and yeah so and obviously like the other thing we've already been through most of it but unleash ranger get this awesome new animation on us and then we get our skills to be upgraded with these sick animations as well as you can see bam <laughs> and then a lot of smashing the floor and a lot of uh, uh green going flying around so yeah really cool there uh, and that's pretty much all of our uh, like new unique um, profession things that the untamed changes about the the base ranger. So it's not the most crazy overhaul I've ever seen, you know, in terms of um, the the skills and the changes that it makes. Um, but yeah, I think it's a pretty effective one, and I'm looking forward to um, trying it out when the expansion comes out. Trying it out properly anyway, and, and making a character leveling it up. So that's everything for the profession mechanics. So ne next thing we're going to do is have a look at the specialization and traits. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the specialization line for the um, untamed and then the individual traits within it. So if we open up our, um, our trait menu here, as you can see, as it's an elite specialization, it's going to have to go in your third and final slot. And you can see by having this on here, we have the hammer proficiency which means that we're now able to wield ha hammers as soon as you can put that on your bar. So obviously that gives us access to all these new weapon skills that we went through. And then the first passive here, um, which which you'll, you'll get straight away, is Unleashed Power. So gain access to cantrips and unleash. While your pet is unleashed, its skills are replaced with larger area of effect skills. So obviously we've been through all of that, the cantrips are all of these here. We've been through the new pet abilities we've got here and the unleashed mechanic and everything like that. Uh, so that's everything we've already been through. So now let's have a look at the choices. So the first one we've got is debilitating blows. So disabling a foe applies conditions to that foe based on your current state. Um, so obviously a lot of this we saw was about um, foes being disabled. So anything like stuns, dazes, knockbacks and stuff like that. Um, 
whenever you do that you'll also put a condition on the enemy so if it looks like you can see if you're in um the pet unleashed then it'll put weakness on the enemy if you're in ranger unleashed you'll put vulnerability on the enemy next up we've got cleansing unleash uh, which is remove conditions when you or your pet unleash so remove a condition whenever you basically press f5 and you can do that every 10 seconds to switch switch between the two unleashed you've got blinding outburst so venomous outburst applies blindness in addition to its other effects so venomous outburst was that one of the yeah that's that's the f1 ability here for the uh, for the pet um so it, in addition to what it already does it's also going to apply blindness our next um, passive is Natural Fortitude, which means we gain vitality. So vitality plus 240. And that means we're going to have more health. So our base health is going to increase. You can see it's a pretty high health here. Um, and yeah, that, that's cool there. So I mean, as you're using the melee weapon, if you're using a hammer with this uh, particular spec, then obviously more health is going to be much appreciated. So our next choice is Enhancing Impact which is disabling a foe grants you boons based on your current state. So um, whenever you disable a foe, you're going to get a boon. It, if you're in um, Ranger Unleashed, you'll get quickness. And if you're in Pet Unleashed, you'll get stability. Bolstering Unleash. So gain boons when you or your pet unleash based on your, on your new state. So whenever you switch, so if you're switching to Ranger Unleashed, you're going to get might on yourself and if you're switching to pet unleashed uh, you're going to get um protection on yourself um so there's more you know basically it's giving you more incentive to switch between your unleashed you're putting more boons on yourself and stuff like that so it's just um giving you more reason to do that next up we've got corrupting vines so rending vines converts boons into conditions instead of removing them so that's the second pet ability here. So in addition to what it already does, it, well, actually instead of what it normally does, instead of removing conditions from enemies, it's gonna convert the enemy's boons into conditions. It's a similar sort of effect, but it just, if that's something that's more, um, something that you, that you want, then potentially you could use that to change that skill a little bit as well. So our final passive here is Vow of the Untamed. So your outgoing and incoming damage are increased while you are unleashed. Your outgoing and incoming damage are decreased while your pet is unleashed. So there's a little bit of an adjustment here. So, um, so basically your outgoing and incoming damage are increased while you're in unleashed. So um, outgoing damage um, increased by 15% and incoming damage uh, increased by 10%. And then your outgoing incoming damage are decreased while your pet is un in unleashed. So obviously it is basically making your ranger unleashed even more powerful, but also taking even more damage. So it's sort of a bit more risk in um, going into that. But it does mean that when you go into pet unleashed, you'll actually be a bit weaker. But you're also, well, you'll do less damage, but take more, uh, take less damage as well. So it's a bit of a trade-off there. It just means that your... Um, it adds even more incentive for you to go into Ranger Unleashed to do as much damage as possible then swap back to your pet for a more defensive stance. So um, here we have uh, our choices. We've got Fervent Force, which is disabling a foe, reduces the cooldown of all of your equipped skills. So whenever you disable a foe, um, all of your equipped skills, the recharge time is gonna be reduced by two seconds. So that's pretty good and a good incentive there to, to use your disabling effects. Next up, we've got Restorative Strike. So a percentage of the strike damage you deal heals you. So that's a pretty good one there. So 8% of all of your strike damage is gonna heal you. So that's a pretty good one for helping you stay alive there. So if you're having problems with like your sustain and stuff like that, then that's definitely one you might wanna go with. And then our final choice here is Ferocious Sym Symbiosis. So you and your pet grant each other increased damage and movement speed when striking enemies. So maximum stacks of five, but Ferocious Symbiosis is plus 3% damage and 5% movement speed. So if that stacks five times, then that's obviously going to be like 15% damage and 25% uh, movement speed. So that's going to be pretty good. And that's um, whenever you and your pet strike enemies. So, so that's going to be one that you'll be building up all the time. So that's pretty good. So you can see that one just helps you, your bond with your pet, buffing each other even more. 
Okay, so that is all of the traits within the specialization for the untamed. And we've pretty much covered everything now that I wanted to go through. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave you with a, a combat demonstration where I'm just going to use, um, show off all of these new skills that we've got as part of the Untamed, uh, just so you can see how that all comes together. So uh, I'll leave that with, with you now, and thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe to be kept up to date, and I will see you later. Stop it.